Hey everybody, welcome back to the Paint Party live stream. So glad to have you back in the studio, or for you to be with me in the studio again this week. I am so glad to be with you. We are here on Tuesday night instead of Monday because I had a very important appointment last night. We were doing a local fundraiser for a couple of uh, teenagers from the Ukraine who are refugees in Germany. They are connected with somebody here in our community and unfortunately when they left the Ukraine some person um, stole their savings and so we did a fundraiser here and I'm happy to report we were able to raise a little over $900 last night and that will help to uh, I guess, replace what they had lost. So I'm really glad that I took the time to do that, but I'm glad to be back with you all in the studio for the next episode of the Paint Party Livestream. If you've been here before, you know how this is. It's kind of open house, pop in, pop out, um, and stay as long as you like. I usually paint about an hour and a half, two hours, and we start a new painting every week. So that's what we'll be doing this evening. I do want to show you what I've been working on um, that we did not last week because it was the um, Independence Day holiday here in the United States, but the week before. But before I show you that, I do want to tell you that we will have the paint party live stream normal time on Monday next week or this coming week. Um, then after that, we'll have a break at the end of July because I'll be at a wedding and so won't be back in town, but um, I'll make you, I'll uh, announce that and give you all the information on that as we go forward. So let's get started this evening. I see people popping in the room. You can comment on any platform you're on. Hey Lola, it's always so good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Wherever you're watching the live stream, you can comment throughout the live stream, ask questions, or engage with your other um, fellow audience members on the platform that you're on. Um, but I can see your comments no matter what platform you're on, so I'm glad to have you with me here on the live stream this evening. All right, as we jump in, let me show you the painting. I finished this afternoon, actually. I had time to kind of work on this one. This was one that we started two weeks ago. It was the National Pantheon in Lisbon, Portugal. So we started this. I started it as a sketch, but it turned out to be such a nice painting that I'm really proud of how it turned out. Um, so this will be a really wonderful um, memento of my time in Lisbon. Lisbon was my favorite city that I visited. I really can't wait to go back. This is the National Pantheon. It was a church, actually, for a long time and then was turned into kind of a museum, a burial place for um, well-known civic leaders in uh, Portugal. And so this is called the National Pantheon. And this was a scene or the view through the trees from a, a park that we found while we were in Lisbon. So I finished this up kind of did some additional highlights really to bring out the shadow and the sunlight and the grass, added some additional detail to the to the building, redid some of the structure of the building just to make it look a little more correct, and then obviously added the highlights to the trees. So that's um, what we did this afternoon that really kind of brought this all together. So, all right. Hey, Broke Boys, so glad to have you. Thanks for joining on Twitch. Love to have when people pop in from Twitch and check out what we're doing here on the channel. So, all right, tonight we are going to get to jump right in. Let me change my camera views here just for a minute so I can adjust you all, or adjust this camera as always without making you all ill. Um, in the process and while I'm doing that I'll put up the reference photo we'll be working from this evening. All right we will be doing this very simple I shouldn't say simple simplistic um, still life. Thanks so much Lola I appreciate it. It was a it was a fun one to do and I can't wait. I'm planning to do a whole series of paintings from my time in Europe. So that's one of my goals this year 
before the end of the year is to do a, a series that would be kind of my first actual series like I would show in a gallery. And I may even do a local showing here in my town, but um, just starting to put those ideas together. So I'll be doing a lot more of these sketches as ideas to figure out which paintings I actually want to do as larger paintings from my European trips. So uh, I actually paint in acrylic. I have not dived into oil painting. I started painting about two years ago. Um, yeah, two years in July. So July 2020 was when I really started painting. So I haven't dived into oils yet. I work with acrylics mostly, not mostly, entirely, but it, uh, oils are something that I really want to dive into at some point here in the future as I continue to build my skill. My goal really is for the next five to ten years to really fo focus on honing my ability, my skill as an artist, as a painter, and to, in, in doing that, it will be exploring more mediums as well as different styles of painting and different techniques. So that's one of the things I look forward to doing. All right. Hey, Daniel, I am not in a new studio. It's just a different camera view in front of me. So you can see actually the back half of my attic studio. Usually the camera is off here. I just switched this around to move this um, my cell phone camera. That way it doesn't make people sick as they as I move it around to um, whoops to put it kind of focused on the canvas. So I greet you usually using this camera and then switch it around to focus on the canvas or on the easel that way don't make people sick but uh yeah so that's the de that's the deal yep you're right it is just the canvas or just the camera angle so i'll switch back to i'll put my um palette here and that is correct all right so we will jump over to the palette view or the canvas view and i will bring my little seat over here so I can be nice and comfortable. I have to tell you all, well, I'll actually switch it back here. So I am sleeping. You may hear noise from the street out behind me. The window behind me is open. The window in front of me and the window beside me is open. Um, I am enjoying the best part of living in rural South Dakota in the mountains, um, about 75 degrees Fahrenheit, no humidity, and a cool breeze. So we've had some hot days up in the 90s, but um, compared to much of the rest of the country, not too bad. And uh, when we get these 70, 80, 90 degree days, and then at night it drops you know, into the 50s and 60s, so we get quite... Um, definitely get some relief and cool air in the house so it's almost like you can recondition your your house every evening once the uh once the sun goes down so all right that's what's going on if you hear the noise but tonight um we are going to get started this as i said is a fairly simplistic painting so um we are going to jump right in hey there mom and dad if dad may be working outside but good to have you joining um, what type of acrylic paint, whoops, what type of acrylic paint do I use? I just use the, uh, the Artist Loft from uh, Michael's, the local art shop. It's not very sophisticated and not very, um, you know, but I found the quality is just fine for what I'm doing. I may, as I move into oils, of course, invest in higher quality paint. I think oils are, it's a little more important um, to to have higher quality paint. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Okay, so tonight what we're going to do is we're going to start, um, I think we're going to start kind of sketching this in. I did not, um, I did not tone this. I am painting again just on canvas paper. So this is just kind of a sketch painting again. I did not tone it at all. Um, but what we're going to do is start with just a little bit of um, burnt umber, as we often do, and some white. 
you'll see those come onto the palette down here to the right hand side of your screen my left hand side but your right hand side and what we'll try to do is just get kind of um, some ink or some paint on the canvas what I, I think I'm trying to decide if I want to just tone part of it or just leave it as it is um, I might do I might tone some of this let's see um, let me do a little yellow ochre and we'll just kind of this is already kind of a yellowish tint but we will take some and we'll do some blue because we're gonna do plenty of blue alright so I have you can see blue yellow ochre burnt umber and white and what we'll do is just take some of that yellow and it's really bright yellow so I'll take a little bit of blue to cut that to cut the yellow will give us a little bit more of a green and then we'll just diffuse it with our yeah with our white everything's drying so quick because my air is dry I'm just gonna do kind of a X and X strokes across the back of this here in the center just to kind of give us a, a space to play on I'm not gonna paint the whole canvas We'll just do this and that will give us kind of a spot to work in. I think it will work really well with what we're trying to do here. All right. Welcome, welcome. I see a few more people popping in tonight. So glad to have you. Oh, I got some brown on my brush, so we'll just sweep that right in there. Not a problem. So glad to have you. Hope that your summer is going just fantastic. All right. So we kind of have this kind of mottled brown, and we'll give it just a minute to tack up. That's the good thing about acrylics is, especially in the mountain air where I am, they dry so fast, faster than maybe you would want. But that allows us to kind of dry as we go and then especially in this sort of a setting I can do I can work much more quickly okay then what we're going to do is next we are going to kind of um, get, draw in the composition of these grapes so we will uh, yeah this paper is kind of uh, folding as it, so I'll just keep kind of bending it as it dries. That way we get a good dry, not quite dry where we need it, but I'm going to use my brown, my burnt umber, and I'm going to use my white, and we'll start to draw in kind of our, our composition. I really like how this photo is composed, so we just need to kind of make sure that we get it correct on the on the canvas paper. All right, we're starting to get there little by little. The last time I used this canvas paper, I toned it ahead of time, so it had time to fully dry. Um, we're getting there. Okay, so let's just start mixing some of this brown. I'm going to try to put quite a bit of water into it. This brown, this burnt umber has kind of a red tone in it, which will be really handy when we just add the, the um, blues and magentas of the grapes because the, these blues are pretty cold, but this will give us a basic... A basic start so 
will kind of start to just draw shapes. Um, and we want to figure out, it's basically, let's see. Um, I'm not drawing grapes, obviously. I'm just kind of scribbling on the canvas. Because if you remember the, oh, it's actually just sitting here. I'll grab it. Do you remember the painting of the cherries we did several months ago? Um, and we, I couldn't quite figure out how to make them work. The cherry painting. Remember the cherries in the glass vase? Um, and what I realized is, and there's actually a little more variance there, that by painting the dark and light, the shadows and the, that helped me to actually render the image better. So I'm actually trying to get the shapes of this cluster basically figured out. I just want the shape of these grapes. So I'm just kind of scribbling to see if I can get this. And we'll have that kind of there. All right, I think we're getting it. Okay. And then there will be kind of shadow out here. So I'm just going to kind of suggest that. I'm adding a little blue to this. Darkening it a little bit. And okay, so that's kind of this looks a little more skewed on your, I think, on your screen. Let me see if I can lower this camera a little bit. Um, there we go. Maybe this will help to give you more of what I'm seeing. There, that might help. So you're looking more direct on, um, but it looks fatter on your side, I'm aware. Okay. There we go. Oh, that's so awesome. That is something, Lola, I saw the one you did in your, um, I think it was your backyard, um, maybe in the last week or two on Instagram, and that is so cool. I have not stepped outside yet, and it's crazy because I live in such a beautiful area, but I have just not gone and painted outside yet, and I just really need to do it because I have a, a covered patio on the back of my apartment, where I could paint, there's I, I couldn't paint from life because there's nothing really pretty out there except a park, parking lot. And across town is a, I guess I could paint the backside of town. But um, yeah, I just haven't painted outside. I guess because I just don't want to haul all my stuff out there. But I, I want to eventually do some more painting or do some painting outside. I'd love to go down to the waterfalls here in Spearfish Canyon where... I am and um, and paint the waterfalls kind of plein air, but we shall see. Need to buy kind of a portable set and paints or an easy way to carry my paints. 
All right, as I wait for this to dry, now what we're going to do is we have the basic composition. I like this. Now we want to start putting in some the darkest spots, the darkest shadows. So I'm going to put some ultramarine blue on my palette, and I'm going to come in with some raw umber, which doesn't have the um, red tone in it. It's a darker, darker, and that will give us the darkest kind of almost black color. And we'll do some, we'll start putting in some shadows here. And that will help us kind of decide the, where those shadows are going to be and help to further define the shape. Um, and then we'll just keep adjusting. One of the things that in this painting I am working on or practicing is thinking it, um, consciously about the how limited or how few brush strokes I can make. So because we can make pretty few brush strokes and communicate a lot of a lot of things. So That's, I'm thinking about, okay, where do I see the darkest spots? And I'm just kind of plugging some spots in where there are shadows. These are not individual grapes. They are just shadows of, and then we'll come and fine tune some of this. Here's somebody's dog barking out there. Okay. This is a exercise in trial and error. going to be a challenge because there aren't a lot I mean there are the shadow spaces between these grapes but then the grapes themselves are darker and so you it really does train you to think in a different a little bit of a different way putting a little white into this to raise the chroma a little bit. All right, let's see. Notice how, as I begin to put this in, just by raising the chroma a little bit, all of a sudden there's shapes that start popping out. So, these will be where the light is hitting.
more. And again, I'm just painting kind of shapes, not actual grapes. So I'm painting And then once we get this kind of, again, the right shape we want overall and the right, then we'll start to create individual grapes or the suggestion of individual grapes. Okay. Fairly happy with that. Let me, whoops, step back just for a minute. We'll give this a minute to a minute to uh, dry. Then we'll work on just refining this. All right, now let me take this and I am going to mix another color and do the stem or the first idea of the stem. That way we begin to put some of that in and it gives me a break from just because if I just look at grapes all night then I just end up over painting alright so I've put over here on this side then some yellow ochre some more yellow ochre and we'll just come in with that I think with just a little bit maybe even some uh, I can just I was gonna put green but I can mix green I think just take a little dab of blue then we kind of have a greenish yellow. Uh, every time I do something like this, it reminds me of the quote, good old days. Lola, you may remember when I was in the apartment studio in Little Rock when I first started, and I was at the time aware of someday, specifically, I had problems, and I, I'd probably talk about this more than I need to, but. I had trouble mixing greens that looked organic and I said someday I'm gonna know what I'm doing wrong and I'm gonna know how to fix it and uh, well we've kind of come to what you know those points where I in many cases know what I'm know more at least what I'm doing now than I did but what I've uncovered, and I at the time was concerned because I thought, man, when I learn, the part of the fun is learning. And then once I know what I'm doing and I can just, you know, like this, just mix the green I want instead of pulling it out of a tube, then I will be sad because I'll have lost some of the joy of the painting, but it's not true because I've uncovered so much more that I don't know that it's kind of like, well, even though I do know how to mix greens a little better, there's plenty of other things I don't know, so.
We'll keep working for sure on that. All right, we're just kind of drawing in some of this where the light's catching. Okay, just a little bit at a time. Then let's see if I can put a little red in here. I'm kind of mixing this all in a hodgepodge so we all so it's kind of we'll get the same. We'll get, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. We will get the uh, kind of, not universal, but consistent kind of coordinated colors. Okay. Okay, not going to get too detailed. Now we'll go back to the grapes. Let's take a look at these grapes again. Little by little, I'm going to step back, take a look again. All right. Hmm. I'm trying to think what the next step is. I think part of it is on this side, in order to get this to render as the light shining right on it, um, and the same over here, we want very precise edges. We don't want edges blurring into each other. So I am going to, I think, take that same mixture of ultramarine blue that we had and raw umber and mix it together. We'll just do a little bit more blue. A tiny, 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 tiny bit of white. And we'll mix that and then we'll begin to draw some of these edges. Because I think that's all, I mean, not all we'll have to do. But 
I'll show you something on the right hand side we're gonna do the dark color edges so hello my friend I am so glad to see you I hope you are well and your summer is going well sir okay so here on the edges I am painting specific grapes okay this will give us Pretty precise edges. Okay, now This one is more gray, so we'll draw her in there, kind of like that. Just mixing as we go. And there are kind of all right, going to need more paint. Okay. Again, we're just kind of painting larger shapes but trying to get as precise edges as we can so we go up okay
Okay. Trying to define these negative spaces a little more. Okay. Sorry, I have my my big fat arm right in the way, I'm trying to hold this paper a little more stable. I could have taped it down, I guess. That would have been the smart thing. Okay, now we're starting to uh, get our shapes in. Now, we should be able to come and put in just detail work because basically the detail of these grapes outside of what we've just done is just modeling them to indicate where the light is shining most. So we'll have kind of a grayish blue and then the darkish and then the high points. Um, and so yeah, that's basically what we have for the, the rest of the... But it's starting to come together, I think. What do you all think? Oh, my paint's drying pretty fast tonight. So, okay. Now, I want to go back a little bit to this stem and do some additional work up there. Just making it more precise.
Thanks. Yeah, I think it's it's coming. I really do think doing, I mean, it's silly. It's not silly, but it's like doing that painting of the um, cherries a few months ago, like really helped. Um, and then we did strawberries a few weeks ago. Like just having those experiences really helped kind of be like, okay, now this one's a little more challenging because even more than the ch less than the cherries, it, it, you know, the cherries had a little more variety. There were maroon, there were bright reds. It was a whole bunch of reds where this is just all pretty much gray. So, yeah, it's, it's a... But we'll get there. Okay, this is... So I'm going to use this color to kind of... Indicate where the light is showing. Now on this left hand side, what is interesting to me when I look real close is that on the edge of the outside edge, left edge of these grapes, there is almost a white um, almost a white reflection that's kind of like a reverse reflection of the or a reflected color off the wall so that helps us provide some distinction if we can do it without it being too thick because it's almost not visible and we need dark right up against it So we'll mix more dark and we'll just keep playing with these until we get them. So I have to wait because I can't model these too much while they're wet but start to start to create some variations here One good thing as a painter is by doing an exercise like this, it really makes your eye look really hard. <laughs> Make you hungry tonight, huh? That or maybe grab a glass of wine or something. Um... I'm going to start just kind of going in with some of these light
on some of these I'm putting way too much of the light in but that's okay because I'll come back and put dark model it with dark around it so that's kind of where I'm thinking I just try to get some of this gray and we'll basically carve out the uh, the shape of this Oh, I missed a whole conversation. Oh, there's a major storm in Little Rock. We had some hail the other night. It was only about 10 minutes, 5, 10 minutes. But our temperature dropped like 20 degrees and cold, cold wind, which was nice because it was like 50 degrees and cool wind. And then, but we had hail. Fortunately, only marble to pea size, pea size to marble size, but I'm glad your air conditioner came back on, Bob G. That's, your part of the country, that's a, or your electricity, that's a dangerous situation if it goes too long. As we add more refinement to this, like we won't have to get very much more specific. We'll just have to put suggestion of, all of a sudden we're getting all kinds of three-dimensional images, even though I've basically used the same um, basically use the same fundamental palette kind of that gray blue and dark blue and we just keep refining Some of this I'm just going to put for now the rough sketch in.
There. Look at that, y'all. Grapes. I can taste them, actually. You're right, Marta. It does make me hungry. I just love, especially sweet grapes, when they're really ripe. What am I talking about? I like the tart ones as well, but this is... Yep, fun, fun. And I think we may really get this one almost done tonight. Usually we don't get a painting done, but this one is so, like I said, fairly simplistic that, and it's just that going back and forth between the darks and the lights. So I'm gonna mix some more kind of dark, the dark color or kind of mid-tone color. Um, and some more blue, some more gray. If I put more of the brown in, then it's more gray. All right, so that's a little bit darker. We'll just keep doing that. Okay, now let's look at where we need. So we need dark on this side. Then we do this kind of mid-tone in between the lights and darks so that you get a a good blend where it's like, okay, is it that three-dimensional look? Some dark up here, kind of in the shadow, for sure up here. We'll just use this to kind of carve around those light and dark spaces. And that way, again, we don't, whenever you're doing something like this, you don't paint every grape or every piece of fruit or whatever it is. Focus on the Spaces between, the spaces around, and all of a sudden, shapes emerge. Okay.
Okay. As we come down in here, there's some spots that are really reflective. So, eek, that does not sound good. Please stay safe. Notice down here, it's hard to see. Maybe I can pull it up a little bit. I am just putting some very subtle shifts of color down there because this part is further away from the light. And I'm not actually, again, I'm not actually drawing grapes. I am... Drawing shadows and light to suggest three-dimensional spaces or three-dimensional appearance. Okay. And we are now. All right, the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to take the darkest color I can mix, that deep shadow color again, with just blue and brown. Clean the brush completely. And I'm going to try to go in and draw in very specific shadow shapes around interior grapes. And I'll show you what I mean and we'll see if it makes a difference or how much of a difference it makes. Okay, so now I want to start to get really specific about this, like this shadow in here. And that helps to carve out other other grapes. Oh. 
Okay, there's kind of a dark gray that comes out, but it's This is one of the best secrets, quote unquote, that I've learned with painting is if you go dark, and I use this technique actually this afternoon on the trees by the, um, by the National Pantheon. Notice how dark these shadows are right up against the highlights. I went about as dark as I could and that's what gives it that appearance not only of three dimensions but of light up here and shadows and it's you can see how the Sun is hitting it. But I had to go back and redo those shadows because they get you get too light and you think because our eye wants to paint the light instead of painting the shadows. And painting the shadows is more or as important or more important than painting the light. And that's a big mistake I made when I was just starting out. Is I would paint the highlights and then I'd wonder why it just didn't spark the same way as I wanted. Or you know the way I wanted it to. Why it wouldn't stand out. And it's because I was painting my shadows way too light. Because you can always lighten up the shadows, right? It's much easier to lighten these shadows. There's only so much light you can go like when you're painting highlights you can only go so bright so you have to go shadow or you end up with just way too bright and not enough contrast but that's one of those little things that is not very complicated like technique wise it's not complex but if you get it, then it's like, oh, I can see, you know, just by adding shadows, all of a sudden, grapes are showing up. And I'm probably overdoing it with the shadows in some, some situations, but it just makes the work so much easier than when you come in then once we kind of get this next pass done of all these shadows then we can kind of look where our light spots are we can 
enhance those and then we can put our final highlights on There we go. We'll keep working here. My Little Rock people, are you still with me? I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. I'm stepping back a little bit. I am going to give these grapes a minute. Actually, I'm going to do just a little bit. Something I just saw down here at the bottom. I'm going to refine this shape so that these Grapes at the bottom are have a good, strong good, strong um, edge because that will again give us the illusion that these are you give them all a good edge then they they stand out from their the background And I'm defaulting to the dark as I'm doing these edges because, again, I can always go lighter. Down to a light sprinkle. That's good. That's good. As long as you get that kind of good soaking sprinkle, that can go all night. Awesome. Awesome. Lola, has your weather up north good today? Are you guys getting heat or is it cool? 
what is it like I guess I shouldn't say up north because I'm almost probably as north as you are or more but out east from me This almost looks like one of those like paintings from somebody who knows what they're doing. <laughs> kind of a, I shouldn't say that, but kind of a master painter. You know, they kind of do that. I kind of love that brushed background where it's kind of unfinished and it just makes the subject really pop out. All right, I think we're getting there. I think we're really getting there. Okay. Beautiful about 80 and sunny. Wow. Yep, that's about us. That's This is our, um, our just rewards for winter up north, isn't it, Lola? <laughs> it is our just rewards. Just rewards for sure. Okay. I am going to take a. Maybe I can use this one. I'm going to take a dagger brush. Nope, I don't think it's going to work. I will take a synthetic brush and I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow. And I'm going to try to do the same thing with the stem that I did with the grapes. I'm going to try to give some really precise um, edges. That way it is it stands out against the Background, we'll just see what we can do. Okay, this I want to, it's hard because the background is similar in color. What I can do though, I think, is take a little this and then we can carve around our We'll carve around there.
I had to cool this down a little bit. match it with what's around it okay there We'll just narrow all that down. We did all that exploring, but we'll make this all we can. I guess I should help you get, since I'm working up here, I'm gonna also take this time to kind of hopefully cover some of this Okay, I don't hate that though. Some of that brown shows through, that is just fine. Okay, so going back now, we'll take the, this yellow and the yellow green problem is the background in the picture is much lighter and so I need to actually darken my stem Okay. Now I need my littlest brush. Oh, we have half an hour to make this work. We can do it. here. I'm going to sharpen these edges. She's going to be super patient with this.
There we go. That will give us that kind of organic. look and we'll take right here where there's a I'll just put some stems in there or even the suggestion of stems. And the further back we go, the less detail we need. We don't need all the detail that's in the photo because, again, this is a painting, not a photo. But we can do some of this. Then... I'll go here and take some of this green, I think. Let's we'll just draw some. Where the sun or where the light is catching those little twigs, we'll just put that in there. All of a sudden, just a few spots of green again give suggestion of three dimensions. We just lay that little light on top. It's like, oh, there's that stem. Okay.
what I'm doing here is giving the stem something dark to stand out against on that light background. So I'm darkening it more than it is in the photo so that it It actually stands out and then I'll come back and re-highlight it because then when I put the yellow and the green red against that then it really At least that was the thought. Okay. I'm going to quit dinking around with the stem back to the grapes we'll finish hopefully finish this up all right we have about 20 15 20 minutes to wrap this up I think we can do this if I'm focused so Need to come back with the. I'm going to take some blue, a little bit of brown. I'm going to try to do a look at where my lightest points are. Okay. And I'm going to try to put those in. No.
I'm just in some of these I'm just kind of dabbing the dark spots again just to give that mottled appearance they'll just kind of disappear into the background We'll go back to the dark. And we'll just see if we can wrap this up in the next five minutes or so. You guys feel free to tell me when you think I'm done, or if you think there's some glaring thing I need to fix. I remember us getting to this point with the cherries as well, where it didn't quite, and then all of a sudden it came together. So I think we're right almost at that point. 
where it's just because I'm not unhappy with these. at all but once you look at something for two hours you start to overthink yes absolutely Lola yes that's what um, I'm trying to figure out how Once I'm done, and then the challenge will be choosing because the photo shows us everything at once, but and that's the challenge again of this exercise is because all these are pretty much the same. I think I'm going to put one of the bright spots up here, like right in this grape, and then maybe over here. Let me try that actually. Let me take a little of this white because we can always undo it. And I'm actually going to mix it a little with the blue because if I do straight white out of the tube, it's going to look like really funny. Um, so I'm going to put there, that one I like, then one up here maybe. I said I was going to do one, but I think there is, and I do think you're right, I do need to come back a little brighter. because that's what gives this some definition. I just don't want to overdo the bright spots. I want to be really smart and intentional. But I don't, I think, Lola, I think you are exactly right. Now all of a sudden I'm starting to see more of the dim three dimensions again because it's like the light is catching each of these in its own way. Yeah. Okay. Now, actually, this is looking pretty, pretty good, I think. What do you all think? I am kind of digging this. Um, a little bit. Let me just put one little. A few. Here. Just actually drawing the reflected light on a few of these grapes will make them actually appear correct yep that's it some reflected light Yes, 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 that's what was missing. A little bit of reflected light.
It's crazy how, what a difference a little bit of detail, a specific detail like this, like the reflected light can make. Just gives, gives, uh, again, it's just a few brush strokes, and all of a sudden you have shapes that weren't there before. Okay, I don't want to go overboard with that because that is after I said I don't want to go overboard then I start drawing or painting more okay I do want to come back I think with some actual white and we're just gonna see there here, right there. Yes, uh, Lola, as always, you are the genius. I said, oh, this won't look right out of the uh, white out of the tube, but it actually absolutely does. As long as it's not overdone. So important. Yes. Oh my goodness, y'all. Lola's a genius. There it is. Now they start to glow, don't they? There we are. Wish uh, I had some cold. Oh, I wish I had some cold. Uh, oh, cold ones in the fridge. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I'm looking on your screen because it looks a little bit different on your screen, but it looks really amazing. Both places. Oh, that makes me so happy. The grapes. This was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun. And see, it just comes together. It just did, it just did. These ones are really fun. Like the, I had a lot of fun with the grapes and the cherries. I think I'm going to I have five minutes left, so I think I am going to do a very simple signature. Since I don't often get to finish a painting with you all, so I am going to do a very simple dark kind of purple signature step back and look yes I did and um, so I am going to
I stepped back and looked. Now I like what I see. I took a photo. I think the only thing I may, I'll look at it again in the morning because acrylics always dry dark. So if I need to brighten anything up, any highlights, I may do that. Otherwise, we'll call this one Fini. Do one more little two. There we go. All right, that's it. I think that is it for our time tonight. So I will begin to say my goodbyes and appreciation we will be back here next week for the live stream all right i'm gonna switch my camera back but uh, that way again i won't sicken you all by m the motion of my whoop and that way you don't have to look at my dirty uh, all right I will take down our other stuff all right y'all so this is what we ended up with tonight whoops kind of looks weird in that light. I have really dim light over me, but I'll put it back on the, you can see there. I think it looks really good. You can see my reference there here. I kind of like the way it ended up with just the suggestion of the shadow and then the back just kind of darker. Um, it's not as washed out as the, the background is not as washed out as the original um, reference photos. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out and it may actually, I don't know, I might frame this or something because it looks like it should be framed. But this was fun. If you look, we are, there's the cherries, there's the grapes. So, um, and then I noticed we're still sitting here unfinished, but just needs some detail work are the strawberries we did a few weeks, um, probably a couple months ago. So I might have a little, a little bit of a, uh, of a fruit series going on. These kind of coordinate though. Maybe some pears or bananas. We did pears last year, but they didn't ever turn out very well. Maybe I'll bring, pick those up again, and I don't know. They're somewhere here, and I may uh, work on them again. I have so, y'all, I have so many unfinished paintings all laying here that, okay. Anyway, all right, well, this has been a blast with you all. Next week, we will be the regular date and time, so Monday night at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. That's 8 p.m. Eastern, and um, we will get one more in. We are at episode 69 of the, next week will be episode 69 of the paint party live stream. So we've kind of, we haven't done exactly one a week because of, you know, when I was in Europe and other things, but we are pretty close. And I have learned so much over the last 68 episodes of this live stream. And I'm looking forward to many, many more weeks with you all. I wanna say again, thank you so much for joining me. 
And I hope you'll join me next week on the live stream. Until then, have a great week, and I'll see you then. Oh, and what do I always say? If you want to see the progress photos of anything I'm painting in the studio or on the live stream, you know where to find it. It's on Instagram. So look for these on Instagram in just a few minutes. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.